There's no man. book from sixth, sixth grade. That sixth grade book that he never wrote in in sixth grade. What's up, my brother? How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Doing great. How things going with you? Yeah, good. Just got back from watching that George Michael uh, documentary. It was the last piece of work that he did. But it hasn't been, it hasn't been launched here in the States, though. Really? <clears throat> no, I mean, right the, the, right now, the thing that people are going fucking crazy about is this whole fucking Elvis fucking movie that's, you know, that's... Yeah, yeah, that was advertised. But I think it's only on... I've got a funny feeling. It's only on for one night, like, all across Australia, in, only in Hoyt's cinemas. Um, but, yeah, it's very sad. Like, I've, I've come out of it feeling fucking sad, to be honest. Because I was a big, like, George Michael Wham fan, in, you know, when I was a young man. And, oh, yeah. uh... Just a sad story, but it was his last piece of work. I didn't realize that it was, he did the, like, he made the film. He made the documentary. Oh, wow. So but he, I don't know whether he actually, he actually finished it before he passed away, but, okay. um, yeah, look, it was, it was very well done. Okay. Um, but yeah, anyway, how are you, man? Um, doing phenomenally well. The fact that I'm in the other side of the fence now, um, yeah. it, and, and that's all that matters, um. To be to yeah. be to be brutally honest, because um, let's face it, uh, prison is is for no one. Um, even the people right. that cooperated against me in my case, um, I wouldn't wish it on them. Um, however, um, it's just like I said in RX Muscle, and I've said in a few other places, it's like it was a blessing in disguise for me because um, it it cleansed me of everyone that really didn't need to be in my life. Um, yeah. And. Yeah, but- it gave me time to reflect. I mean, when you're, you know, when you're arranging workaholic and you're launching all these businesses nonstop and all that and all that, it's like you really don't have time to set aside to like think and reflect because you're constantly, you know, on, you know, on, on that on that hamster wheel, like you know, like you're like yeah. run, you know, running your, it's like running your ass off, and you don't have time to determine to say, okay, is this person genuine? Is this person using me? Is this venture going to be sustainable? So you start to just throw money at it, and that's what happened with my clinic, man. It's like I, I did I know it was illegal at one point, absolutely. It was it, op, it was it, uh, was it possible to get it fully legitimized, absolutely. Was I paying an obscene amount of money very early on to get it legitimized, absolutely, because. I never wanted to be a criminal. I never wanted to be portrayed as the Pablo Escobar steroids, like the Miami Times and and <laughs> Forbes referred to me. Granted, it's yeah. a nice it's a nice name to have, but you know it 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 ruined a lot of relationships, and it's one of the things in which I'm trying. You know, it's like even though I try to inform them, it's like, hey, you know what? I did not mislead you guys. I know that you want to believe that I did. Um, however, uh, I did tell you I'm in the process of legitimizing things, and at one point in time, I even thought we were fully above board because I was paying people ridiculous amounts of money on a weekly basis, and they in- really informed me that yes, everything is above board as of as of now. Um, however, it's neither here or there. I mean, it's in the rearview mirror, and at the end of the day, that's what matters. It's in the rearview mirror, moving forward, nothing but positive. I mean, I got out June seventh. Um, you know, June, um, you know, um, June 8th, I was already on, on John Bravo's, uh, you know, uh, um, channel sure, yeah. June 9th. Sure. I was on RX. I got generation. I, and I got VH one. I got everybody calling me, you know, and it's like the love yeah. and, you know, and support is, you know, it's humbling, dude. It's, it's, it's humbling. And it's something that, you know, it's something that I'm grateful, you know, it's like I'm grateful for. I'm forever grateful. Um, part of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you is because, um, and prior to being incarcerated, but the, the news, um, being thrown out there for, of the, of the size of the, uh, you know, of the operation and the, the interest of my story, um, from, from from the likes of VH1, New York Times, Forbes, Bleachers, you name it, 
um, nothing was ever be able to get it, it to come to fruition because let's face it federal prison you could be fucking Biden and you're not getting in <laughs> to interview somebody oh, yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. so now that I'm out it's a completely different story um, I wanted to um, I wanted to pretty much figure out a way where I can keep this as being uh, my baby and not necessarily, uh, how can I say, saturate it onto, uh, you know, it's like onto others because they're like, Netflix, will they pay me? Absolutely. VH1, would they pay me? Yes, but I won't have rights. Well, that's true. And look, if they commission it, like if they commission it, you, you might get some, a reasonable amount of money. But if you, if you make the movie and take it to them, they'll give you peanuts for it. So you've got to go down that path of, of getting them to, to take it on board, to commission it, to, to actually get any real money out of it, right? Okay. So um, it's not as easy as you think getting on Netflix. Well, get, getting paid is the hardest thing. Like, they're not stupid. If you could, if, like, like the Dare to Dream movie that you helped us out with, right? If I, Flexies, if I went to, to Netflix with that, now one, one, they wouldn't put it on there because it's not it's not 4K, but two, they give us peanuts for absolute peanuts um so yeah i mean that's why i said to you in that message if you if you're planning on going down the netflix path you need to speak to them before you start doing it got it to get to get them to commission it because going to them after fuck them you've already spent the money making it they'll just say well, we'll give you 25 grand and that's it and then yeah you'll get a lot of you'll get a lot of hits you'll get a lot of people watching it but are you going to make any money out of it no Okay. Absolutely. So, so, so. so I know Generation Nine. You know, I've had their movies on there, but I guarantee you, they haven't made a lot of money out of it. Okay. If you publicise it and you market it right, you're probably more likely to make, um, you know, a fair bit of cash if you do it on Amazon Prime, you know, and outlets like that, Vimeo, okay. you know, iTunes. But that costs money again to put to get it on there. You need aggregators to get it on there. So, but. I think, you know, if I think you've got a good story, and I think, you know, especially people in the fitness industry who want to watch it. And if you if you market it right, you put the right trailers out there, get people interested, then, you know, you you charge three or four dollars to watch it. You could make, you know, you could make a shit out of it. Well, it's not only that, because just to kind of give you some some insight, is that where I eventually want to tra- um, transition this into um, is. A movie. I mean, if people are very well familiarized with the Henry Bolger story, um, the Whit- uh, Whitey Bolger story, it's like is that um, a lot of the things is, like people fail to understand the intricacies and the black market aspect of steroids. You see, yeah. for for a Hispanic slash minority to be considered the largest in U.S. history, specifically in the anabolic industry. And not be Russian, because let's face it, like what criminal organization like dominates that industry? The Russians. I mean, you got the, the, the best chemists in Russia, the best chemists in Moldova. And I'm a Puerto Rican individual that was very ambitious and just took it by storm. So I was walking around with bodyguards. My ex-wife was walking around with bodyguards. I was threatened, you know, in my gyms. I was threatened in pretty much every areas that you can imagine. Um, and... I wanted to develop it to to a point where it's not just awareness of the drug industry for people not to minimize it, saying, "Oh, well, he just sold juice." Fuck you! I it, like they had it right when they referred to me as being the Pablo Escobar steroids, but I also want to show you as the reasons why they referenced me to that, because I was just not any other clinic. This is how it actually, you know, it's like this is how the actual industry is from a black market perspective. I've seen some really crazy shit. You know, I've and I've been through a lot of crazy shit, and I've and I've experienced some some situations in my life that, no matter how ruthless and crazy I was, you know, really fucking scared me. Um, and I really think that, from a general awareness perspective, the documentary would be great, make some money off of it, but but the but the story as a whole can just be like fucking motion picture, just could be you know could be. Something that people yeah. would be like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I think possibly your book would be the first step. Documentary book, movie. Okay. You know, that's 
that's the that's the track I'd go down. But um, okay. uh, before I forget, there's an Iron Abbey gym just down the road, road from me, by the way. Yes. Literally just down the road from me in Melbourne. Um, who play who play you, Rich? That's what I want to know. Ah, uh, not Mark, not Mark Wahlberg, that's you for sure. Ah, no, no, not Mark Wahlberg, that's for sure. Uh, Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, that's, that's what I was going to ask you about the documentary. I oh, mean, carry on. What? Who do you, that's a, uh, it's a silly question. But what, who, do you, who would you like to play you? Oh gosh, that's a very. Uh, I would love either Channing Tatum. Yeah. Um. He's got, has he got to be Hispanic though, or is he got, oh, you don't mind? Not really, he's got dude. To be not, not, doesn't really matter. Somebody. Be authentic, though, or Puerto Rican, sorry. Not, not, no, is he got to be, to be authentic, you know? Yeah, true. Um, I mean, we, we could we could do our due diligence of figuring out and brainstorm who, but um, at the end of the day, pers personally, it's like, uh, I think it's somebody that can really... I can really embrace it and take the story and run with it. I mean, I've seen him in various different, um, I've seen him in various different um, movies and how he's transitioned from different ethnicities to another. So I think that he has the skill set. You know, well, he's a good actor. Right actor. He's yeah. underrated, underrated actor. Yeah. So I think. Yeah, but back to what you were, so um, one thing I was going to ask you. And I, uh, All right. So I just wanted to start this video by saying how much I appreciate Chris Cormier. He pushed me for a lot of years. I got to watch the recent documentary and we're showcasing this video to show a little more in depth of where Chris came from because going back, I mean, you guys would really, this is the best documentary I've ever seen uh, when it comes to bodybuilding related uh, documentaries. And I just want to say congratulations to Chris. Thank you for always being a supporter of everything that I do, and you're a great, great competitor. A lot of years us battling it out, and, and you know, he really, when I was up and coming, was a major part of helping me improve and become the best. And I just want to shout out, congratulations, Chris, and uh, it's more than a pleasure for us to feature this uh, little little background of you on this channel and uh, continued success. All the best, man. <laughs>